I'm like in the zone. So, so I knew it was coming and you know, in one month I had a freaking huge $2 million a month and I didn't feel shit, Alex. Yeah. What's going on guys? Uh, we're here with a special episode of the after hours podcast. We have probably one of the most badass options traders out there. Uh, uh -oh. Shane Lucci. Yeah, <laughs> someone that we've been excited to talk to. So thank you for coming on, my man. We really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me. So my question is, Lucci, a lot of people know you as a badass options trader who moves millions and millions worth of size. But I don't think a lot of people know about how you got started. You know, you were flipping early on and then you went into the prop trading world. So can you give us a quick intro on how you got started yeah. trading? Yeah, man, I started... Um... Man, I had my I had my daughter when I was 20, 20 or 21. I think it was 20. But it was just, you know, it was a wake up call, man. It was a wake up. It was a wake up call. Of course, you have a you know, you have a daughter at a at a at a very early age again. I mean, and it's a girl, too. So, <laughs> you know, I was I was flipping, as you were saying, right, just buying and selling tickets, which, by the way, that hustle is still alive and booming. Um after COVID, you know, so COVID now is ending and everybody's paying ridiculous money. I don't know if you've seen what happened to the, to the ticks as soon as Messi got, as soon as Messi got signed to Miami. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw like that. Quadruple, right? Like it was yeah. something crazy. Way more than that. Way more than that. It was absolutely ridiculous. Taylor Swift too and everything. So yeah. the, the money is coming back to the market. So I've, I was always a, 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 a flipper in college and everything. And, um, I, I had my daughter and I went to get a real job. This is my only real job that I ever had. And um, real job kind of related to my degree in, in college, right? My degree in college was finance, which they didn't teach you anything about finance in reality. It was just all corporate theory kind of stuff. And, and you know, you never really got to apply any of it. So, so I ended up doing financial uh, uh, analysis at, um, at this medical company. Uh, called Fresenius Medical Care, and I was there for like nine months. And during the nine months that I was there, the PlayStation threes came out. I think it was the three or the four, and I made like four. I made forty grand flipping that, and my salary at the at the company was like forty grand too. I made that shit in a weekend, and I was like, "What the fuck am I doing at this horrible place?" Looking at the same spreadsheet every day, I was just I gotta get the hell out of here, and. I go online. I go on Craigslist. You guys remember freaking Craigslist? Oh yeah. And um, there was a there, there was a job posting there for like an equities trader. It was a hundred percent, com uh, um, hundred percent commission kind of thing. And I walk into the office. It was a prop trading firm in New Hampshire, in Salem, New Hampshire. And I'll never forget this. The first day I walk in, I mean, it's it's twenty five kids. The, the, the oldest kid there was probably like twenty six. It's one kid in the office. He made like 15 grand and he bought everybody pizza. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck is going on here? Everybody had like two monitors and everybody was just watching level two. And, um, you know, it was just such a weird vibe. <laughs> and I was just like, hmm, this looks, this feels like home to me, you know? So I sat there for like a year trying to figure out what the hell was going on. I didn't know what was going on. And they, you don't really get much help at, at these prop firms from back in the day. There's no, there's not much education. You just kind of learn by doing, which, by the way, is the best education. One could argue that is the best education. And um, that's it, man. After that, I just, I knew it was there. I knew the money was there because you see it every day. You see it every day. Every trader who who is break even or trying to make money, like you know, the money is there. That's why you keep coming back every single day. You can't, you can't avoid it. It's right there. I mean, we just saw Tesla go up 15 freaking points. I go to lunch. I go to lunch today. It was trading 264. We go to lunch. I come back, and market's starting to come back up, and it runs freaking 10 points into the close. Those options alone on the weeklies, there's a double right there. You know, So the money's there all day. You just got to figure out how to grab it and then how to keep it, right? So those yeah. are the two difficult parts. So it took me about a year and a half to kind of figure out how things are kind of moving. And then 2008 happened. The crash happened. And I'm I'm like a kid in a candy store, man. I'm just short. I'm just coming in every day, short Goldman Sachs, short JP Morgan, short everything, and I'm just printing money every single day. So so, you know, it took a while. It took a while to figure things out, and then it takes a while for you to figure out what your style is and what you're good at, and like what kind of markets you trade well better than others. 
Yeah. You know, so you no, know, makes that's, sense. Kind of the, that's kind of the short story of it. Back in these prop trading days, this guy that made 15 grand, you know, pizza cost him probably a hundred bucks. So what do you do with the rest of it? Have you seen <laughs> well, in these prop trading days? It was kind of like the wild, wild west, you know? So like, are there any crazy things you saw, whether it be partying, fun, this, that? Or I mean, just- remember this was, this was still back in the day, right? These were all New York guys. So they they're still had that, they still had that vibe to them, right? So I remember, I remember coming in one day and there'd be freaking, there'd be strippers in there, yeah. you know, every you know, a bunch of people had a good day or something like that. They, you know, everybody would go out. Out, um, you know, so, so there was a lot of that. Thing. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Obviously, it wasn't as excessive. I mean, you know, we weren't popping colada pins or whatever the hell that dude was doing in the, in the, in the movie. <laughs> and everything. But uh, yeah. I, met him, the I met him, by the way. I met I met him too after he got out. I met him too in New York, and you know, you you realize where all those stories came from. You 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 really see where all those stories came from. And then after living in New York, I lived in New York for for a good five years running a hedge fund and running a shop right down on wall street. And we would meet a lot of, we would meet up with a lot of the HFT guys, a lot of the back office guys, a lot of the freaking brokers that were there because they loved my options flow. Right. Some of the, some of the brokers were having their whole salaries off of my, off of my, uh, off of my executions. So they would always, it was still that time. They would always take us out to dinner. They would take us out to dinner once a month, man. Fanciest restaurants down in the city, you know, so that shit still existed. Now you don't see that stuff anymore. You don't, you don't, you really don't see that stuff anymore. We're all this woke culture shit. Nobody wants to do that kind of stuff and whatever, man. whatever. <laughs> what would you say? Is that like- was- what would you say is like the thing that like kind of like separated you from the pack? You know, you start off in this like prop firm, you yeah. know, there's like 20 guys like and you're yeah. probably the most successful person coming out of that, you know, so like definitely. So like, what do you think, you know, it's a great question. It's a great question. I asked myself this question because I was like, you know, you're, you're always thinking why you right because. At the end of the day, you have that you have that thing swirling around in your in your head. Like, am I really that special? Like, no, you know, you ain't that special. You know what I mean? But what is it about? What is it about that person that makes them the one versus versus everybody else? Uh, in that office, there was forty guys, right? And they had they were ninety five percent short traders, by the way. So they would. In the error before they changed the uptick rule, and again, I, I don't know if you want to give a preface, Alex, here on the uptick rule, but the uptick rule basically just states that you can't, sh- you can only short on the uptick, which meant if if Tesla's trading 275, 74 right now, you can't just hit a bid and just get in and short something. You got to sit there on the offer and a, and a tick higher, right? So if the last tick is to, is 74, you got to sit, th- you got to put your short at 75 and hope somebody buys you out. Correct. You know what I mean? That's the only way you can get short. Now, imagine a world where everybody on the street had to play by the rule and then all the prop shops had a tool to bypass the uptick rule, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how 90, 95% of their trades were all shorts because all they were doing we're looking for aggressive shorts that were sitting on the offer that had to sit on the uptick and they had a bypass and they would beat the shit out of a small cap illiquid stock, get the short to step down and then cover right into the short. Right. But now imagine 40 guys in an office doing that shit on a 10,000 or a 20,000 share stepper. And the whole office has 50,000 shares, yeah. <laughs> has 50,000 shares. They smoke it down a point. Now everybody's got to get out. Right. And the first schmuck in the office, whoever hits that button first, he's getting thrown out the window, man. He's getting thrown out the window because as soon as that short disappears, the whole thing runs back up two points. And now the whole office is fucked. So that was the game that these guys played before the uptick rule got 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 changed. And I think I, I was the only one who learned how to go long <laughs> stock in that office. I was the only one who learned how to go long shit. Cause I saw the writing on the wall. I was like, yo, y'all this number one, the tool to use it was so expensive to use. It was like, it was like some of these hard to borrow locates where you see like 300%, 400% or something like that. It was, it was, it, you had to pay to use this thing. So if you were going to pull it out, you better be, you know, there was a cost to it. There, there was a, there was a cost to it and you had to pay that cost no matter what. And, um, you know, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. So I kind of figured out, all right, let's figure out how to go long stuff too. And, um, I don't know, man. I was just hungrier than everybody else, man. I think that's the answer to your question, man. I was just fucking hungrier than everybody else. How old were you back then? When this I was happened? 23, 24, maybe. Yeah, 24 at the time. And, bro, I spent 
four hours a night, four hours to five hours a night, I would print out the trades from the head traders and I would go back on the tape. I'd be like, all right, you know, why did, why did they get in? Why did they get out? And I do that for four hours every single night. I did that for a year straight. I I got to the office at six and I left at 10 o'clock. I didn't fucking talk to anybody. I came home. I went to sleep and I went back to work, bro. So, and you had a kid know, too. And I had a kid too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know, man. I think I was just hungrier than everybody else, bro. I think that's I like what that. it is. Yeah. I think a question and something that's, I think, obvious about you is one, you're a hustler. And I think that I you were kind of born to figure shit. You were going to figure it out no matter what. Yeah. You but, tinker. You know, you just tinker because you know the game is there. You know, there's yeah. a game right in front of you. You just got to figure it out. Was it was it hard for you being this much of like a hustler and someone like this while having a kid at home? Did it put pressure? Because you seem like someone who seizes opportunity quick and you're going to take advantage of like a big trade or anything like that. Was it hard knowing you had a kid at home and it's obviously it's money. There's money on the line. So, yeah, man, I think the pressure. But I think that pressure and again, God bless the people that I had around me, right? I mean, my daughter's mother is a freaking soldier, man. The, the woman will take care of everybody without bitching and complaining. The woman is amazing. You know what I mean? So so props to her, props to uh, my one of my really good friends, who's still a great friend to this day. He um, He was going through a divorce at the same time that I was like trying to figure this shit out. And dude, it's, he was he was miserable. And, you know, he let me stay in his crib for free, bro. He let me stay in his crib for free. So I didn't have to pay rent. You know, I wasn't living in, with my with my daughter's mother at the time. And there was so much pressure on my from my father to to perform to because he had lost he had lost, you know, all his cash during the, the, the crash. And, you know, he was about to retire. And again, like he was like a, at that moment in time, like he was like a a real pissed off old man who, who did not, he didn't hit on some of the bets that he was trying to make in his life. Yeah. And, and, and at that late stage, you know, you're 59, you're about to retire. You're 60 years old. You don't have, you can't, you know, you ain't 20 years old anymore. You ain't 30 years old. You can't manifest a new freaking life. You can, I don't get me wrong. You can anything, you know, you, 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 you really want to do something. Okay, fine. But this dude was on his last bits. You know, he couldn't manifest the energy anymore to go to work and play the game anymore. So all that pressure, I think, helped. I think it helped because it was less like you only have this one shot. You got this shot. You know this. You know this money is here. You just have to. You just have to sit here and f and figure this shit out and just twiddle your fucking thumbs until you can figure this shit out. And I think that helped. I think it helped. Were you always pushing like the size you do now? Not obviously now, but were you quick to jump into sizing the way you do? Definitely. I think I've always – you know what, man? In trading and in life too is like people will be like, you know, you need to do – you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Cut your size down. Do this. Do that. You know, try this strategy. Try that or whatever. You have to – you still have to admit who the fuck you are. And you still have to admit to yourself and to – you know, and to more, more or less just to yourself, who you are in trading and how your emotions, how your specific emotional makeup expresses itself in the trading rooms, you know, and not in the trading chat rooms, but in your trading, in your strategy, because it's built into your strategy, because who you are is a, it's going to be a reflection of your strategy as well. You know what I'm saying? And and I've been this way since I fucking started. But then there's so many periods in time where you fight yourself and you fight who you are and then you just turn your wheels. You know what I mean? You just you just sit there and spin your wheels because the whole time you're fighting who you are. And maybe you don't have the account size anymore to do what you need to do. But there's a lot of internal conflict between, you know, in any trader's life and, you know, and, and it all really comes down to not admitting who you are or trying to run away from who you are and that's where i've found i've had the most have had the most issues um that's where i've had periods of you know losses of course two years where i'm not making any money um you know you're trying to you're trying to change something that is innately you you know what i'm saying so you're gonna push up on that resistance all the time every day more or less and you know it's People say like, okay, you know, you have to change these things. You have to change these things. But do you really? Do you really? Do you really need to? You know what I mean? How much do we really change? 
you know, how much have I really changed since 24 as, as a trader? I was literally like this at 24. So how much have I really fucking changed? And how much have I tried to in those 15 years of trading? You know what I mean? To come to the same damn conclusion and be like, yo, you Lucci, man. You got to do what Lucci does. You have to. You have to. You can't fight it. So, so yeah, man. I've been that dude that's since, answer. bro. I've been that dude since. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm, And what people don't realize is – to move size is really freaking tough, bro. It's, it's tough. Even, this options world is different because it's tough. you know you have the flow coming in. You have they might be swiping here, swiping there, program here, program there. But what a lot of people don't understand is some of the biggest lessons come from the biggest losses. So you're known for some pretty sick wins, but yep. in terms of losses, is there something that you've learned from your biggest loss that has carried on to help mold you into a better trader? Yeah, man, it's it's awareness of what's happening internally, right? So there's an instinct. <laughs> once you have enough losses and once your body feels enough of those losses and enough of that pain, it already knows. It already it, it, it already knows, right? So when that loss comes or when it's about to come, the instinct starts to move. Your body already starts to move. It's already sending you those signals. It's like, yo, motherfucker, you better get the hell out of the way. This shit's coming. This shit is coming with or without you. It's coming. So the awareness of your of the internal shit that's happening in your mind, your stomach, your heart, all this, all this stuff, there's just these weird ticks, man, that it becomes more metaphysical than it is about trading. <laughs> you yeah. know? Cause I'll put the size on for anything. I'll put the size on for anything. And then immediately after just reading and everything like that, you'll know. You'll know if you're right or wrong, or you'll know if you you're a little bit too early or a little bit too late. You'll know these things. Your body knows these things too. And it's just learning more to how to listen to it how to listen to it all the time how to listen to it but the problem is is that life tends to tends to put you in a place where you can't listen to it or you're you're half a step late or it brings other bullshit to the equation so life will tell you yo you need you know you need two million dollars on this trade because we got to pay for this damn project that we just started up in wherever the fuck we just start you know we got to pay for this real estate project we got to pay for this cannabis thing we got to pay for all kinds of operations that you have this different businesses that that i'll go ahead and 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 try to get off the ground Life will tend to throw you these curveballs, or let's say you're going through a shitty breakup and you and you're just you're just off, man. You're you're just off, man. Um, you know, life will tend to get you away from that instinct and get you away from, you know, the true feel of it all. And then you start overthinking. Now you're just overthinking, and now you no matter what you do, you're gonna fuck it up. Yeah. So those that's what it's taught me the most. The pain has taught me how to be way more aware of it. And, and to be able to see it coming. And that way, that way, even that fraction of a second that I own back is enough to save me from, you know, an outsized loss that's going to put me on my ass kind of thing. What do you do to kind of like maintain that Zen? You know, because like just talking about it, like it's very easy, but like 100%. being able to stay in that fucking mental like zone that you're talking about, it's, even when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, damn, this is very difficult. Like it's impossible. Honestly, honestly, if you really break it down for the majority of people, it's impossible. Let's just put yeah. it out. Let's just put it out that way. It's impossible. Okay. What I try to do, and and again, is just have good daily my morning routines are just everything. They're everything. But by the way, even if you have a great morning routine where, by the way, I'm four, in the, four o'clock in the morning, I'm up. I do yoga for an hour. I get to the office. I change. I hit the beach. I play beach tennis for about an hour, hour and a half, right? So I'm sweating. I haven't eaten anything, right? I'm still just running on fumes from, from, from yesterday. I haven't eaten shit. I'm just drinking water. But by the time 8 o'clock comes around, 7.30 comes around, after that morning, even if I fucking lose, I can't lose, bro. Even yeah. if I lose, I can't lose. I already had the best day in the world. You know, I'm on the beach at 7.30. The, mother, the sun's coming up. It's the, you know, it's 75 degrees, 80 degrees, and I'm playing a sport that I love. I absolutely love. And if I wasn't trading or I wasn't doing anything like that, I'd be on the beach for eight hours a day anyway. So once I can get that out of the way, you can't, you can't touch me. You know, it doesn't matter what you bring to me. I already had a great day, you know. Yeah. Now, now, to his point, how difficult it is, you know, market turns on. 
market turns on. You got your brain's got to go. Your brain's got to go now. It's got to analyze all this stuff, right? We got we got all our morning prep. You know, you got eight names that you might be sitting there watching, and now you're in the shit, right? Now you're in the now you now you're in the battlefield, and you're just kind of moving around names. You're moving around names. You're moving around names. You're just pl- you're just plugging around trying to find out what's working, and that process. By the time you're it's 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I'm fucking exhausted, bro. I'm exhausted. Yeah. At, at the, the 11 o'clock, I'm fucking exhausted. So yeah. I got to eat. I have to eat. And then after, then you get the itis from the eating, and you can't produce that same energy that you had from 9.30 to 11 o'clock. There's no way. I can, I can I, It's never happened for me. But there's still game to be played, right? I mean, this, t- this afternoon moves all over the place. So, you know, I definitely take it a little bit easier in the afternoon and everything. And, you know, if I have a bad day, bro, I've had so many of them. It just doesn't matter anymore. It really doesn't. It, it doesn't. You get to a point where it's, it really is just numbers. As, mu- as difficult as it is for somebody to internalize that right now, for a lot of your, your viewers who might be listening to this, as difficult as it is for you to internalize that, it's true. It's true. You get to a point where – it doesn't matter because you already have your life. You have the shit that you have in your life. You've made enough, right? And I'm talking, you know, for a trader who's who's been in the game for as long as Alex and my, and, and, and myself, you know, we have enough shit. We're fine. You is know? it ever enough, dude? Is it ever enough is the problem that you – It is. Lose. It is. It always is. It always has been. Even when I was starting out, like I always was fine. You know what I mean? When we look at the big – you got to look at the big picture of this thing. Are we eating? You know, do I have a roof over my head? Uh, you know, can I enjoy the fruits of life? Can I go to the beach? Can I play some tennis? Can I take a trip every once in a while? Yes, 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 yes. What the fuck else? You know what I mean? And of course, all the wants and desires, that's what keeps us. That's what keeps us coming back. But that's what keeps the pain coming too, because we suffer for our desires. We suffer for the next million that we want to make, the two million that we want to make. We got to put in some work. I have to put in some work mentally to figure out how I'm going to connect with this market, with whatever the hell is going on, with however janky this freaking market is or whatever the, you know, whatever new market we're looking at. You have to study. You have to, you have to figure things out. You have to slowly adapt over time, you know, and then be there. When the cash is there, you got to fucking be there, man. So that's, that's work. That is work. That is pain and suffering, man. And we do it because we want, we want, we want more. It is what it is. I want more, you know? So that's a whole nother conversation, Alex. Me and you can, can go to war it's on that. human one. greed and human emotion, bro. I that's think all it is, bro. I have so much fucking money. I have a beautiful car, beautiful house, beautiful girl. Yep. Yep. I got everything that I want, bro. But for some stupid ass reason, it is never enough. It's for some stupid enough. reason, I'm still pushing size. Yep. For some reason, I'm still getting stuck. For some yep. reason, I just can't control myself and i can't help myself maybe because i'm i'm young maybe it's because i want more for myself maybe it's because i'm just sick in the head i really don't know and that's it's a choice man it's a choice you know we can go down this rabbit hole all you want this is what i do this is this is literally what i do and this is what you know people pay me to 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 talk about because it's it's such a big deal you know the human emotion of it and people want to walk around and and act like it ain't and act like it's all easy and act like they got solutions for everything or whatever. But me and you are sitting here right now having the same existential problem. And we have that same issue every single day. Those thoughts are going on in your head and in my head every single day. You can't escape them. It's part of who we are as part of, of, of our emotional makeup. And it expresses itself in the markets as well. We know these markets are super emotional. These moves are super emotional. Yeah. And people still want to deny how much of an impact – our emotions have on everything, our decisions, or the way that we live our lives, how happy we are, how miserable we are, all of that shit. This is all this is this is all I talk about. So this is the question is why? Why is it so that I have a green day? I am kissing yeah. my girlfriend. I'm like, baby, I love you. We're gonna go out to dinner. I have a red day. I'm like, you know what? Don't talk to me. It's not even a matter of a fact of if I make a hundred grand in the day, sure. it never feels as as yeah. emotionally powerful yeah. Yeah. as losing even 10 grand on the day. If I lose 10 grand on the day, it makes yeah. me feel disgusted. It <laughs> makes me feel like a horrible person. It makes me feel like <laughs> sick in my stomach. And yeah. then I make that hundo and I'm just like, do I really even need it? 
<laughs> so Alex, Alex has gotten to a place where he's miserable either way. You know what I mean? So, so Alex, you gotta, you gotta come to Costa Rica, man. Well, let's do some ayahuasca or something like that, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I've really been, I've really been trying to dig deep and find that solution, and I don't know what that root of the problem is. It's not. It has nothing to do with the market, and it has everything to do with like if you take work, take all the material, take everything out of the equation completely, and then figure out who you are after that after you after you delete all of that stuff then you start to figure out you know who you actually are after and besides all that shit the money the 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 material all that stuff like who are you really what makes you happy once you start there then you can start then you can start really building that framework for yeah. for a much more stress free happy sort of lifestyle so regardless you already know if you make the 100 if you lose the 10 it ain't gonna mean nothing so you have to look for that elsewhere you know what i mean that that meaning and that purpose has to come from 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 elsewhere and again i'm not you know i'm not telling you to do a damn thing over here alex i'm just i'm just you're trying you know, to I'm tell just, me i'm just giving I'm you my, my story girl, what you're telling me yeah. so, <laughs> right now that's it i'm just giving you my story of how of how I went about it because bro when I came to, to Puerto Rico and I knew I was gonna hit it you know how you have that feeling that you have you have that feeling where you're just like yo it's coming some something something is about to hit and I'm in the best mental state I'm like in the zone so so I knew it was coming and you know in one month I had a freaking huge two million dollar month and I didn't feel shit Alex yeah. I didn't feel shit and I was just, I remember looking at my girl just being like, what the fuck? Is this really, you know what I mean? It's like you, I moved my whole life to, to get to this point. I did it. I did it, you know, and, and you telling me I'm not going to feel anything. So it just, it just threw it's me for a whirlwind. It's being desensitized. It's being yeah. desensitized to the money so much so that it yeah. is completely irrelevant, which is, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a very it's a good, good thing, thing, thing. because- Yep. It allows you to put on a tremendous amount of risk without really giving a fuck. That's the benefit of it. That's the benefit. Of it. The worst part about it is that it also creates so much more risk for you that you do not need. That yep. leads to more potential headaches. Because like you said, yep. if you have a loss, it may lead to you making emotionally bad decisions on those future trades. Absolutely. So if you think about it logically, to prevent those future bad decisions – so long as you just size down and just show up and probably make – like if I give you an example, like you could probably with your eyes closed make $2,000, $3,000 a day every eyes single day, closed. eyes closed like this. It, I love is, that you said that, Alex, because the kids the kids that are sitting next to me, some of the – and I call them all kids, by the way. They're not actually kids, but I call them all kids. They sit next to me, and they watch me make fucking 20 grand in my sleep, bro. I'm not even I'm – I'm like on YouTube. I'm like on YouTube fucking around, man, and there's twenty, you know, there's twenty grand in gains right there. I don't even, that, I don't even exactly flinch, it, bro. I don't even exactly flinch. It but it's that's, it's it just like you said, bro. Just like you said, it's nothing, bro. It doesn't even mean anything to me, which is a horrible thing to say at the same time. But it's real. It's real. That is a real emotion that I feel on a daily basis. You and know? the problem From, is uh, that once you get to that level, the problem is that you can't go back. You can't, you can't fucking go back. Go back. You try you, 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 if I tell you, Lucci, every single day, no matter what, you're gonna make three, four k a day. Yep. You're gonna be like, that's that's probably gonna make you miserable, right? It's yep. not gonna make you miserable in terms of you're not gonna be rich. You're gonna have plenty of money. The problem is that there's something deep in us, and I think there's something deep in a lot of traders, the ones that kind of surpass a certain boundary. That we're kind of crazy, bro. We're kind of crazy. We may not look it, we may not act it, but there's something inside here that is just it's it's like a primitive uh survival attack 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 at least in me that i just can't control bro i can't control sometimes yeah i have learned to accept it and the shitty part is is that and again we as traders like i mean you guys are all do you guys all trade by yourself you guys yeah. all trade at your houses that's it yeah. 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 yeah yeah right so in that kind of environment you're in the zone you're in your world nobody can take you out of this world if you trade around other folks you know, and if you trade in an office like me, for example, everybody's trying to help each other to, to progress. Right. Like I have a goal of hitting 10, 20 million. You know, the kids here have a goal of, you know, 100 K, 200 K. You know, we had a guy over here that was trading a 30 million dollar freaking account. and He was trying to hit 100 million. You know, so everybody's on their own path. Right. 
But if you do it in a space where you're kind of sharing all this kind of stuff, there's an interesting value that that happens right on on top of it. However, the other side of it is they'll watch me be up a hundred grand, two hundred grand, not take the profits, and then and then and then have a ten grand day. You know what I'm saying? And or they'll watch me have string of of ten grand, twenty grand days, and then I'll put on some serious size because I see something I like, and then lose a freaking half a million dollars. You know. So, you know, there's something to be said about all of it, but you are who you are. Again, Alex, we go back to the same shit. We are who we are, man. I don't, I'm not a 10 grand a day trader. So why am I trying to force myself into that fucking peg, man? Just because what? For the good of, for the good of who, you know? So at the end of the day, I am who I am, man. I push the size because I see it. I push the game because I see it. And if it's there, oh, I'm getting paid and I can use that money to help a lot of other people. I can use that money also to help, of course, to help myself. Um, you know, so that's how I rationalize it. So I think you kind of talked about like, uh, you know, you see the eight tickers gap up on your screen and yeah. you're analyzing the information and you're talking about, you know, paying yourself and being able to hit it. What is that that you're hitting, you know? Like, what are your kind of, like, typical go-to setups? Or, like, is it in the tape? Or, like, is it resistance or support? Or, like, what are you looking for, you know? every Everything is tape for me, and it's a lot of options-based tape and then and then equities-based tape. So I'm looking at level twos of, of options and um, and of the equity as well. So, for example, like, if we're looking at this Tesla, like, we have a gap down in the market today. And Tesla was up four points. It went red. I think, well, at some point in the morning and immediately it's right back. It was right back to 264. This was this was at 11 o'clock. So you knew the thing had some relative. You knew the thing had some relative strength. Then I'm looking at the tape. What do I see? I see I see some guy buying next week, three hundred dollar calls. And I see him buy two million dollars worth of this shit. And I'm like, who? Why? What the fuck? As soon as I see that, some guy two weeks out, the next couple of weeks out, buys the 300 and puts a mill down on it. And then some guy's out buying in January for the next year, and they start buying 10 mil of this shit. And I'm like, Who the fuck are these guys, dude? No (laughs) way. And I'm like – and in my head, I'm like, this is going to happen again. Yeah. Because on a dead market like 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 today, more or less, they'll pick one or two names and they'll fucking run them. And Tesla was that Tesla was just that one today. So I sat I sat there. I started looking at the options. I'm like, dude, if this thing blows to 265, 266, forget about it, bro. And boom, you know, even if you catch two, three, four points out of that, it's fucking great. Obviously, yeah. if you catch the 10, you know, I'm making a million bucks, but, you know. Is it, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for signs of, of just something going down, you know? So, for example, on the UPSTs and all those uh, uh, super bought-up uh, ARC names, the Affirm, the UPST, the Unity, all those names pulled back today. And if you looked at the tape on every single one of those names, somebody was just gutting stock the whole day. Somebody was just taking profits the whole freaking day. And they chose those names. The affirms, the UPSTs, and all that, all that nonsense. The CVNA, the Carvanas, all that shit that went from you know eight bucks to twenty four dollars over the last couple of months. Um, you know they took profits on those names too. So I'm looking for like big picture tape ideas where I know there's going to be an outsized move in something, and I know it's going to be worth it for me to hop in the option because if you don't have a decent move. You're going to buy an option and, and no matter what, you're going to sell it for break even or, or, or you're going to lose on the time premium and everything like that. Like yeah. most people who go long options, they'll always lose money. They will always, always lose money because most of the time there ain't shit to do. There's not shit. To, there's, no, there's nothing to do most of the time in most of the names that you're looking at. You need, you need something. You, know? you need so, shit going down is what I'm hearing. Oh, man, it's going down. So either somebody's on the wrong side of something and there's enough people on the wrong side of it and everybody's just going to get hosed. NVIDIA, you know, there was a, there was a lot of shorts that got trapped uh, in this thing. Every single day you see shorts get trapped in NVIDIA every single day and they cook them. They cook them throughout the afternoon and then this thing comes back to highs. You know, you need some kind of catalyst. You need some kind of juice. If you ain't got that, it's stupid to play options. And it's the, the right play is to sell the options. So that's what I'll do. Most days, I'm selling a lot of options. I'm selling, you know, 60, 70% of the trades that I'm making, I'm just selling shit. 
So I sold puts on Tesla and I sold puts on NVIDIA, of course, because even if I'm not a part of it, let's say I didn't catch the 10 points, I can sell the puts and scrape that premium all day. I can do that. I can at least do that because I know Tesla ain't going to tank in my face. So I can sell some out of the money puts and watch them go to zero by the, by the time Friday comes around. So those are kind of my those are kind of my games, man. You know, I'm always writing. I'm always writing. And if there's somewhere to shoot and if there's some, you know, if there's some shit going down, I'll, <laughs> I'll take a shot. I love that. I think something that's cool about listening to you is one, you're incredibly like Zen and you have this like great internal reflection. Like you're able to like analyze like Alex's even emotions and hearing it. It's just like, I'm sitting here. I'm usually not quiet, but I'm listening to this. Day, I feel like I'm at church. It's amazing. <laughs> but I know on the other side of that Zen guy, there's also a freaking monster. I, 100%. when I first got into trading, I used 100%. to listen to one of your old interviews and you had said, uh, it's patiently waiting until your market and then it's all guns blazing. Yeah, man. So yeah, for man. you, what does that look like when your market hits? What yeah. changes in your demeanor and your actions as a trader? Yeah, man. It's range, man. It's range. And we all got standing <laughs> desks up in here. So, so boom, okay. I'll, I'll stand the desk up and I'm ready. You know what I mean? I'm ready. I'm jumping around. I, there's tons of energy and I'm, you know, I'm ready to express it through the market. So, so guns blazing, my market is when there's panic, when people are fucking panicking. You know, when people are panicking for a bid and they can't get a bid because there's nobody buying. And that market is always is always when I'm I turn into a complete monster, man. And just the adrenaline alone, that shit will last you for 48 hours, 72 hours, however long you need it, man. However long you need it. And that adrenaline alone, man. Well, because once you're once what you've been waiting for is come around. So for me, in this case, I'm waiting for this market to, to finally just come back around and, and we get a 100 point move down on NVIDIA or, you know, whatever these pullbacks that um, – um, on Tesla or things like that, you know, something that I can really sink my teeth into Netflix, uh, you know, things that I can really short, but the panic won't, the panic doesn't happen. It happens once or twice a year. You know what I'm saying? So you're patiently waiting for a year. Most people can't even do that. You can't sit there and wait because most people just, just get bored. Right. And then they overtrade and then there, there's accounts blown. More accounts are blown off of overtrading, by the way, than one or two bad trades. Right. More accounts are blown off of overtrading. And most people just sit there and overtrade every day, myself yep. included. Yep, yep, that makes sense. I mean, just to kind of shift gears a little bit, I don't sure. know if you know this or not, but in 2018, I actually joined the Steam Room to get a little bit of options knowledge. So I wanted to talk to you about how you started the Steam Room, how you met Wall Street Jesus, and what you guys are doing with the Steam Room. Yeah, man. Um, Steam Room is a, is a really cool place, and I invested a good a good chunk of change in there to kind of build – my own world, so to speak, right? Because I was always unsatisfied, dissatisfied with the chat room experience for most, especially this Discord. I don't know. Do y'all use Discord? Do you guys? No, we use, we use no. Slack. We use Slack. Slack. Okay. Slack is much cleaner, man. Discord yeah. is a fucking shit show, man. It right. is such a shit show. I don't even know how to run these things. And I always had problems customizing. Like I wanted to customize my own room because I wanted to add so much data in there. Like I, like now the future of the Steam Room is going to be so much of our biometric data. It's going to be your trading data as well, just synced right into the room. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, analysis that Wall Street Jesus does, I'll talk about how I met him in a second. Uh, but a lot of the analysis that he does, some of the new tools that we create, we just put it all all into the room and then have an open API. So even the customers can kind of just do whatever the hell they want with the data uh, as well. So that's going to be like the future of it because, you know, again, as an options trader, number one, everybody needs flow. We happen to be the first ones in the door um, when, you know, for options flow, wall street, Jesus was one of the first ones who was doing this. And, um, He's a dude. He's a dude from Long Island, man. He's a dude from Long Island. He lives in fucking Long Island, man. Calls himself Wall Street Jesus. Obviously doesn't show anybody who the hell he is, you know. So for us to just even come across him, I remember we've been, you know, we've been at, you know, down in New York. This guy was a broker. He was a broker. And, um, you know, he, he would always follow um, – 
you know, those reports or whatever. When you, as you're a broker, you got to advise your clients here to buy X, Y, and Z. So he would always follow these reports and, and try to figure out what to put his clients in. And he was a, he was a gambler too. His father was a, was a horse track. Uh, you know, he, he used to gamble on the horses all the time. So he was a degenerate at the same time as well, just pushing out free information. And, you know, he kind of started looking at the options flow to figure out how to scalp equities. And he just put that, he started putting that shit out there for free. And when we came across him, you know, he probably had like 30,000 followers or something like that. He didn't have a room. He didn't have anything. And we were like, yo, just come on board with us and we'll build this whole system behind you. Right. We'll actually build buy the data, build the tech around you and, um, you know, and then and then push it all through this platform. So, you know, he's kind of the OG of it, man. And and now that we're in this conversation about options flow, there's so much there's so much shit. There's so much trash platforms out there pushing options flow and they don't realize that trillions of dollars gets traded in the options market every day. If you looked at all of it, you'd be fucking miserable. You'd be the worst trader on the planet. You'd be it's it doesn't even give you any value to look at every single order that hits spy and every single order that hits Tesla. It's the same thing as reading a level two on tape. If you yeah. read time and sales on Tesla and you try to make sense of every transaction that comes out on Tesla, what the fuck what the fuck good is that gonna do for anybody? You know what I mean? Let alone for you making any money. So you need a filter. You need a filter. You need somebody to tell you what's a what's an aggressive bet. How that bet is actually being, uh, 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 how that order is actually hitting the tape, why it's aggressive. You need all that stuff. And, p and people right now are just selling flow platforms, and they are the worst platforms. Man. They are the fucking worst platforms, and they don't help anybody out. And a lot of them look for unusual options activity. Um, and that shit, that shit again is 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 next to useless as well. So it has to come with context. And the same thing that I teach for the tape, it has to come with theory. It has to come with context. So, you know, so that's how we linked up with Wall Street Jesus and connected it all. And and for the future of the steam room, it's just going to be a lot more data, a lot more data. And I can't wait to to do the biometric stuff as well because if we can get to a point where okay, I can tell your heart rate is going crazy. I can see what your eyes are looking at on your screen. Maybe I know you're watching a YouTube video while you have $100,000, like while you're down $100,000, which, which tells me you're escaping, you know, what you need to, to handle here on your screen. You know, what kinds of influences and what kinds of data can we cook up that can tell us, you know, that can, that can even predict if we're about to take a 30% drawdown or 40% drawdown or, you know, whatever. You don't, you don't know, you know. So right now, I think with this with this AI stuff that's all coming out, with these platforms now that are all coming out, the technology is slowly getting there to the point where we might be able to 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 have sort of controls in place for our own emotions. You know, yeah. and we might be able to save ourselves from ourselves. I think that's our biggest risk as traders. You yourself are the biggest risk to yourself and your emotional state. And if we find more ways to help. You know, traders with that, I think that's going to be the next generation of trading products and things like that. Yeah, that sounds awesome, man. Because that, that makes a lot of sense. Because something that I learned uh, from Brett Steenbarter back in the day was sure. being used, if you're stressed in a position, mm -hmm. chances are that you are either too big in the position or you don't have a plan. So whenever you feel that internal stress in you, that's your trigger to say, wait a second. Let me just double check. Let me see if I have everything in place. And that's kind of like what you're talking with the biometrics. If you feel your heart rate going up, if you feel whatever that uh, the rate that happens, then you'll be able to kind of adapt that yeah. change. I think that's really awesome, man. I think yeah. that's really awesome. Yeah. So that's that's going to be the future. That's some of the stuff that I'm working on right now. Cool. And also one more thing that's, that's really awesome that I like to see is you do the YouTube stream uh, in the morning. And, bro, it is. I, I actually have it on the side while I'm kind of playing in the morning. Yeah. Well, my favorite thing is, yo, Ben, check that bit on the U car. The big car on the U car, Ben. <laughs> Dude, that shit, bro, makes me lose it every single time. So how did you get started doing that stream, man? What's that? Honestly, like? honestly, it's always like it's always like the advent of creativity for me after I've kind of gone stale for a while. Like I was, I remember being big on Instagram for a little bit, and 
you know, and then I just get tired of these things because co- just pushing content. Do you guys like pushing content? I mean, Alex, I've seen you push a lot more content these days. So, I see you a lot now on the YouTube shorts. So I know you up in there. I know I know you're doing something. But so, do you enjoy it or does it does it feel like like so let me, let me, you let me have to do it? Let me tell you how it is. So I've been I was making weekly content every single Monday for like four and a half years. Every single yeah. Monday, without a doubt, I'd make a YouTube video or I'd make some type of content. And it was fun because I was doing it live at first where I got to interact with the chat. I get to talk to people. And after a certain amount of time, I was like, you know what? Like if I'm stuck in a trade, because I did it religiously at 11 a.m. No matter what, 11 a.m. every single Monday, no matter what. There'd be sometimes I'd be stuck in a trade or if there'd be a big opportunity, I'd be like, you know what? Like it makes more sense to focus on the opportunity than to make the YouTube video. Right. So, yeah. and then eventually what happens is like we, it, the education that we give, there's no sexy girls, there's no flashy <laughs> cars. So no one watches it. Right. So after four yeah. and a half years of just making content and content and content of people that teaching people ways, how to make millions of dollars, eventually hard stops, max size, yeah. uh, stopping, cutting off your trading after a certain period, making sure that, you know, you have a plan, all the proper information that we want to give people to succeed. Maybe a thousand people watch. Maybe yep. a thousand yep. people watch. And then in yep. my head, I'm like, you know what, bro? Like, enough is enough. After four and a half years of doing this shit, bro, enough is enough. And what, what we realized is just having the shorter form, like YouTube shorts or whether it be TikTok clips, yep. it's in the same amount of views. So for me, I'm we're kind of now focused on more quality rather than quantity, rather than making another video on you know, the next black swan that's happening, the short squeeze that's happening, that this that's yeah. happening, the index, the CPI. Now, what I want to do, what the team wants to do is we kind of want to be able to focus on things that we love. And for me, bro, this is like the first time that we're getting to talk on like a more formal, intimate type of way. And I'm having you like a blast. this. You like I'm this. Ha- this I'm, is having a blast. I'm having yeah. a blast because you are not only an incredible trader. But your mindset, bro, is so freaking awesome because you're, the way that you answer questions, I could tell, bro, that you've been through the ringer. I, I know exactly what it's like. You've, you've definitely made a million dollars in a day. You definitely lost a million dollars in a day. You definitely yep. know what hardship is like. You know what the good days are. You know what the bad days are. And for me, I'm the type of guy that I just want to learn, bro. I'm, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I don't make the most amount of money. If I see someone making money, I ask them questions. I, I am humble enough to say, you know what, but like – you're a badass trader. I'm gonna join the Steam Room. You're a badass trader. I'm gonna look into the options, uh, the master course. I want to be able to improve. Yeah. So for me, being able to talk to a trader that is not only smarter than me, emotionally more capable than me, someone that has more experience than me, someone that is a lot more, um, like, I guess, like it, more, more mentally strong in certain areas that I lack. This to me is the type of content that I want to create. Word. This is the type of stuff that I want to learn about. Word. And if this gets a thousand views, if it gets 10,000 views, you it doesn't care. matter to me because now I'm doing what I think is not only going to help my trading, is going to help their trading, is going to help everyone's trading. And at the end of the day, if we go, if this creates some sort of friendship in the mix where I come to uh, Puerto Rico, we hang yep. out, we grab some steaks, we hang, yep. do whatever it is, that to me is more valuable. Then make just another video that no one is going to watch, that no one's going to care about, that at the end of the day is not going to change my life. But- yeah, I got tired. I got tired of it too, bro. And when I did the live, I realized it was the most – it's the it's the rawest form of me that everybody yeah. – you know? It's not a short video. It's not something that was uh, rehearsed. It's not highly produced. It's not highly edited. It's oh. the camera's on. You're fucking trading. You're in exactly. the jungle, bro. You're in the jungle because a lot of people don't understand. Trading's quiet, bro. It's quiet, but like <laughs> it's not really fucking quiet, bro. If you have all this crazy shit moving. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I realized that was the most rawest way. Like that was just the rawest way that you could get you could get me. Right. And I am uniquely me on that stream because <laughs> I'm I'm in the mix and I'm just I'm just voicing my thoughts. And Again, the whole office feeds off of it as well, right? So the whole office is listening as well, and then the whole office is like, "Yo, you gotta, you gotta take a look at this. You gotta take a look at this, 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 and this." And we all, everybody helps each other, you know. So a lot of trades get thrown around in here, and just one idea here at the office. By the way, my best idea today came from one of the one of the boys at the office. It was Mara. It was Mara Long. He mm-hmm. called it out in the morning. And I didn't realize what BTC was doing. I go look at BTC. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. 
then Mara's got a big short interest. So, so now you start thinking, all right, now, now we got a, now we got a little plan. I threw out a feeler. It wasn't doing anything. And then BTC just started running. It yeah. ran like a thousand fucking points. And this Mara squeezed the shit out of everybody. And I, you know, I made 30, 40 grand on that fucking trade. My know? favorite is when you're trading the stocks that I'm trading. Like when you're oh, trading oh, the yeah. GFAI, oh, yeah. you're trading the UCAR. That yeah, to oh, me, because yeah. I, bro, like people may see, all right, he's down 50K, he's down 100K, yeah. but I know this motherfucker, bro. 100K <laughs> is like, it's like, all right, like the 100K is there. Like, all right, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got, right? Exactly. So that's exactly. that's the way – that's what I enjoy seeing is not only am I trying to improve my options trading by watching and learning, but when you're trading something that I'm trading and I see you put on 20, 30, 40,000 of the UCAR or yeah. 20,000, 30,000 of GFAI and you're like, yeah. there's a seller on the tape at 33. Look at him refreshing. Look at him refreshing. Yep. And I'm like, you know what? I see the same shit, bro. I see the yep. same shit. And that to me is like, all right, wait a second. Yep. Tape is universal. It's yep. universal in small caps, large caps, sneakers, yep. tickets, this, that. It's at it's the end of the day, universal, bro. supply and demand. Bro. <laughs> supply and demand in every type of thing, bro. It's if you're at a bar and there's one girl and she's the ugliest girl ever, she's oh. in high demand. It's the oh. same thing in every single type of scenario. <laughs> and that's the type of shit that I like to see, bro. That's the type of shit that I like to learn from, bro. That's, by the way, that's the whole master course right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's most of the master course right there is me just going through all of these different forms of tape and extreme. Extracting, extracting the information that we need to either to either make a trade or or to keep it moving. You know what I mean? And and trying to shape the the students' mindsets to change a little bit to an everything is tape mindset, right? Because if you can look at the markets uh, with a tape mindset and you look at your life as a tape mindset. I guarantee you everybody will be better off from a business perspective, from just an overall understanding perspective. Everybody will be smarter immediately if you learn to look at the world as tape, you know, if, if you and, and to me, everything is tape. So I, I love that you say you say you saying that, Alex, that's, that's exactly that's exactly how I roll through my days, bro. <laughs> that's funny as hell but dude you're such like a you're such an intense guy and it's like you're obviously so passionate and like the, like how you approach markets how do you detach yourself at all from this yes. i feel like you're you seem obsessed with yo it, but which that's is what my secret do. that's my secret i don't give a fuck about any of this shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's my secret man at all times man i really don't give a shit you know i really don't I really don't care. Of course, it's it's levels to it, right? I mean, you know, you can't, you know, you have a big loss. Of course, you're gonna feel some kind of attachment to it. But once you've once you've understood, that's where your happiness comes from, because your happiness will only come from the detachment. You have to. You have to if you want to be happy at all. I've met tons of traders, you know, and you guys know this is what this is. I connect traders for a living, and this is what I enjoy doing because. Nobody understands us, you know. Even our freaking girlfriends don't fucking understand us. They don't understand how we talk. They don't understand how we how we think. They don't understand how we act. Why we act this way? But you guys, the four of you guys, or the three of you guys, I can see you anywhere, and you know me. I know you, and we'd have way more fun than than half of you guys, you know, with your with your best friends, yeah, me exactly. and you. You know what I mean? Just because so we we we're on the same page you know so for me like i just want to connect all of us from all over the world in whatever freaking language and the key to all of it if you want to be happy at the same time you're fucking trading is the detachment part that's the toughest part that is the toughest part and it it, it only comes with experience to me i've seen some people who are a year in two years in and they already understand it you know and that's crazy that is crazy to me but again you know you never know where a person is going to be until you until you 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 push up on that resistance so enough things have happened to me where it ain't going to you know none of this shit is going to make any fucking difference man and the only thing that's going to make a difference is if i'm if i'm healthy i'm i'm active i'm working out i'm i'm you know i'm meditating my mind is calm you know i treat people i treat people right i try to be better not as fucking angry as i was as a kid and all that kind of stuff if i can do those things yo the rest of this shit the money will come the this will come that will come or whatever like you know so those are the kind of the things that that matter. And unfortunately, it takes it takes a long I think it takes a whole year. It takes a whole lifetime for 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 somebody to really get there. But what you're talking about and what you asked me, you know, the, the how do you detach, you know, 
if if people were actually looking for rules or like things that you could do, you know, immediately hanging out with friends is is obviously a a, a top one. Um, you know, the one thing that you don't want to do, and then there's a is it is if you do have a bad day, you tend to go towards the things that push you further into the negativity right so let's say you have a bad day you your diet kind of goes to shit right or maybe you don't hit the gym that day or maybe you don't you know you don't want to pick up the phone that day and talk to anybody you know what i mean we start to do things that push us further into that energy the energy of the loss the energy of the attachment the energy of the shit what am i going to do tomorrow or i can't pay this bill or that bill we tend to we tend to go deeper there and fighting that every single day that's the that's the game it's the game of it all fighting that every single day and bro even if you fuck up it's okay it's okay most of the time we're so hard on ourselves we take a loss we lose this we lose that blah 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 we're so hard on ourselves especially traders too man we beat the shit out of ourselves this is no need for that there's really no need for that you know <laughs> just dump it get to the next day you know try to get in the right mindset and wake up and, and, and go for it again. Yeah, uh, we kind of touched on this at the beginning with you having a kid and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, obviously, she's probably a lot older now. She's 18, man. She's about to go to college, bro. God damn, bro. What's God your, yeah. What's your, God bless bro. Yeah. 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 What's your uh, kind of like perspective as far as like raising a kid in today's world? And like, how did you kind of sure. go about that trading? Because that's a big balance, you know, trading and then sure. a kid as well. And also, yeah. it's kind of crazy now, today's world, with all that, like, woke <laughs> stuff, stuff like that. Man, so. it's, it's brutal. It's brutal. It, I'll say it's brutal because I'll watch other parents and I'll watch what is considered acceptable now for parenting. <laughs> and, and it's not even parenting. Like, it's not – half – 90% of these parents, they'll just, they'll just let the kid do whatever they want to do. And, and – the kid, the kid's not there yet to be able to allow that or to be able to have that. You know, that is a privilege that just needs to be earned. They're not developed yet. So the, the phones, of course, the iPads, I mean, these kids are hooked to that shit. It never leaves there. Shit, they got a strap backpack on with the motherfucking <laughs> iPad right yeah. here. They can't get it. You know, they go, they sit down to dinner and the shit's right there. They're eating a French fry while sitting there, you know, at fucking two years old and three years old and everything. You know, like, you, I'm still old school in that sense where. And if you guys ever do meet my daughter, um, you'll see immediately in her and the way that she talks and the way that she acts, the things that she does. It's like I brought her everywhere when she was a kid. I brought her everywhere. I didn't speak to her like she was she was she was a kid. She was the most beautiful girl in the in the in the world. But I, didn't, I never spoke to her like a baby, really. I always spoke to her as an adult. And, you know, and man, you can't you can't. You can't tell you can't tell somebody how to parent, right? You can't tell the world that we're going down this shitty trajectory right now. I mean, I can say it to you guys or whatever, but you know, what are you going to do? You're going to tell your brother that he's a shitty dad, and you know his kids are going to be, you know, absolutely useless by the time they're twenty. That's that's that's, that's what's going to happen, and it's sad. It's it's just sad. I'll 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 keep it I'll keep it at that. I do have a lot of stronger opinions on this whole on this whole topic and where these kids are going. But what if we're wrong? What if we're wrong and all this iPad shit is completely okay? What if it's, what if all this AI stuff is completely okay? What if all that, you know, having an online relationship and never actually seeing somebody is, is completely okay. Who are we to say that it's wrong or that it's fucked up? Right. I mean, you know, I just know that my kid and my family and the way that I raised that way they were, that, that I raised these kids or that they're, they're resourceful, man. They're resourceful. They ask the questions. They are polite. They know how to speak. They know how to communicate. And that's half of it right there. And they, and they and the most important thing is they know how to think. They know how to freaking think. So if with my daughter, every you know, every time she's going through some shit, I'm there to just kind of be like, listen, you know, it's not the end of the world, da da da, da, da all this kind of stuff. This stuff is gonna come and go and everything. And she's 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 super dope, man. So all I can do is is try to is try to control what I can, man, and try to do the best with my kids, but everybody else's kids, man, 
Jesus. You know, <laughs> for me to even say, like, I don't want you talking to these kids, you know, some of her friends, too. So I meet, you know, some of the kids at, 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 at school, you know, at her school and everything. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. They can't do shit, bro. They can't yeah. do shit. They don't know. There's no problem solving skills. I should go to the store to go get me some shit. You can't even do that. You can't even do that. The moms don't even want to let them out of their sight. They 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 they, they don't even want to. So it's this. It's just just this weird thing where both sides are so scared, man. Are so scared about everything, and we're just we're just we're just being these shitty helicopter parents and giving these kids everything that they freaking want to so that they, you know, they get to the point in 15, 16, they think they're entitled to everything, bro, everything. And I'm looking at these kids and I'm, I'm still that guy who, if you put a kid around me, I'm going to all of a sudden become a parent to that child. Yeah. And, and I've been in so many situations where their parents, their actual parents will just give me the evil eye, man. You know what I mean? And and I'll just be looking at them like, dude, come on, man. They don't even have these kids playing sports anymore, bro. No. You don't put, you know, no, no, we're not going to play sports and everything. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me, bro? So yeah. I could go on for days about this shit. I don't, I don't think we're going in the right place as far as the youth is concerned, but I could be completely wrong, man. Uh, what if AI saves all this shit and they really don't need to problem solve anything, right? Mm -hmm. What if I'm completely wrong and they don't need any skill sets? They don't. They can just sit at their computers. They can just be these sort of loners here, but have all this um, – have all this shit going on on TikTok where they get all their 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 self worth from on TikTok, on Instagram, or whatever the hell it is. Maybe all that shit works out. I can't see it. I can't see it working out. But maybe I'm Dude, wrong. Maybe I'm. I wrong. love that you can say that. What if I'm wrong? Because I agree with everything you said, but it, I think it takes a like a real special person to even say like I could be wrong. Because no yeah. one else, no one will say that now either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, are you telling me the only way that you can figure out and realize what's going on in the world is by watching an episode, episode of fucking Black Mirror? You <laughs> have to watch an episode of fucking Black Mirror to see, to see some shit that's going on in front of you. Every day, every day, every day you look around, that shit is going on right in front of you. But we have to look – we have to watch an episode of fucking Black Mirror for it to actually – make an effect on us and even then we don't give a shit we watch an episode of black mirror and go right the fuck back to whatever the hell we were doing bro you know and black mirror shows it in such a horrible way that this could be the end of of of, of this trajectory that we're all going meanwhile we get up we do the same thing every day and nobody says a fucking word man china meanwhile doesn't even allow their kids to be on tiktok and yeah. they have that whole damn platform Right. Yeah. You don't think you know, this shit is happening right in front of us and nobody says anything. Yeah. Nobody says anything. Nobody questions it. Nobody says a fucking word, man. They we, just go on, we just go on with status quo and brainwash. Us. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get that part. Something that's really important, bro, that you mentioned is the entitlement. And what I, what the way that I think about it is that the next generation, whatever it may be, is probably going to be some of the laziest, most entitled people ever. And what that tells me. It's for hardworking guys like us, it is gonna be a piece of cake, man. They are so fucked. They are so fucked in this world that all it <laughs> takes is one fucking gypsy and one fucking guy to just work. All we have to do is show yep. up and work, and that's already gonna be light years ahead of what they do. So to me, I understand it. I think it's horrible. I think it's the worst thing ever. I don't think it's gonna change. Yep. But now my mindset is how are we gonna make money on it? All we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep showing up, keep working hard. And there's going to be a new era of like the lazy people and then the not so lazy people and the yep. not so lazy people are going to start cleaning up. So for us, like you say, you're an old school guy. My father taught me to be an old school guy is I'm going to show up. I'm going to work. I'm going to hustle my ass off. And I hope that these people enter the market, whether it be through the stock market itself or whether it be in any type of market, any type of tape, because there's going to be so much advantage to be taken of just because of their lack of understanding of how the world actually really works. I agree. And I think off of that comment, I think blue collar jobs come back to the next, you know, it used to be the doctors who had the God complex, right? And yeah. they were the ones that were getting paid the most. Then it became the developers, right? The, the program developers, yeah. right? And these guys have the new God complex. You can't tell them shit. They don't give a damn about your project. They just get paid stupid amounts of money. Yeah. 
to write code and blah, 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 blah. Now we're moving into AI, right? So now there's going to be a point in time where AI takes over the writing of the code, right? So you, you, right. your developers here, you sure they're still going to get paid, but they ain't going to be the God complex. Now, what if it goes back to the blue collar guys, the guys, the electricians, the plumbers, the guys right. who fucking actually know how to do shit, <laughs> the guys who actually know how to build shit, you know, yeah. and now these guys are getting paid stupid amounts of money because there ain't none of them left. There's no, there's no, there's none like of them Like you left. said, bro, it's tape. There's going to be the same fucking thing. It Bingo. circles back to the same fucking thing. Bingo. It's supply and demand. Bingo. Now, Bingo. another thing that I think is really important that uh, people don't understand is once you've made it in any type of way, and maybe making it for someone who's making 100K a year, maybe it's 500K a year, maybe it's a million a year, is what do you do with that extra money? So yeah. in terms of you, Lucci, how do you diversify your money, whether it be into real estate, whether it be into gold, whether it be into watches, shoes, whatever it is, what do you do to diversify and protect yourself so yeah. that God forbid, if there is a million dollar day that's on the wrong side, how yeah. do you make sure that you're there and not only protected? It's what's your insurance policy? Yeah. So real we have to talk about real estate as being the 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 top sort of insurance policy, you know? So once you come into some cash, immediately the first thing that you should think about is purchasing some property, doing some you know, some rentals here if you need to, um or just living in this place and then just watching it, you know, accumulate here and um and that's kind of your your nest egg because not only do you have, you know, the equity in the house, you also have a uh, uh you know, an asset here that you can take some liabilities off of, you know, so you have, you know, you have a place where you can pull some cash out as well. You know, it's a, it's a, it's an asset that everybody freaking needs. You need it at some point, especially if you want to protect yourself um, from trading, you know, the volatility of trading. Once you get your home, that's the first thing that you got to do, man. Once you get your home set, you get your home freaking set in a nice area that's up and coming that everybody freaking wants to be in or whatever. Maybe it's not priced out already, but it's up. It's about to happen. And you can see these things in every major city. You walk around, just fucking walk around and read some damn tape, read some fucking tape, look around around man open your freaking eyes which by the way these kids can't fucking do they can't do at all you yeah. know what i mean there's no way they got a shot reading any kinds of freaking tape you know walk around some of these cities see what these up and coming areas are you know and plant yourself plant yourself in the mix there so that's that's step number one because you know your trading is going to go on but you got your house, you got your house, you got your food, your kitchen is freaking good. You, you know, that asset you can use for a lot of creative things in the future. So that has to be freaking number one. Um, number two, number two for me personally, um, it's with the current situation that's happening right now, I'm doing a lot of crypto stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm accumulating a lot of crypto, uh, but it's mostly BTC and Ether. So a good percent of my portfolio is always going into more BTC and more Ether. And it's always, uh, I run a couple strategies here where I just write options on BTC and Ether. They have daily expirations on all this kind of stuff. So I'm just scraping pennies just like I am in the equities markets on BTC. The difference is, is that it settles in BTC, right? So as you write your options, it just settles right in BTC and now you have more BTC, of course, assuming you don't get screwed on a on a right and all that kind of stuff. So, of course, yeah. there's risk there. Um, so that's my that's my number two, number three. So that's always that's always there. And I'm always pushing more cash to that. Um, and then it become then for me, like I'm very speculative. I'm always I've always been, um, you know, so here's where here's where the problems start. And when you get speculative. And, you know, when we talk about people, you're really investing in people, right? So, so let's say you want to invest in businesses, right? I have a, a cannabis project uh, here on the island that's, that's basically an outdoor grow operation because most of the projects here on the island are indoor. And the cost, the cost is too high to produce a pound of weed here in Puerto Rico because the electricity is just – the cost of electricity is through the roof. So outdoor is where the opportunity is. But you have to sit on this. You have to you have to be able to sit on this until it gets federally legalized and now you can start distributing all over the freaking world. That's what we're technically waiting for. Um, you know, but there's a lot of there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of costs you gotta eat. Um, just kind of waiting and waiting patiently for these things to happen. Um, and then betting on people, man, because you could have a great idea, a great project, man, and 
the people just fucking fuck it all up, bro. Yeah. And we go back to that emotion and we go back to the condition of being a human. A person will make you believe in them all the time. Let's say you made a girl, right? We kind of give the we kind of give the trust right away, right? Right off the bat, we kind of give it to them. And then we allow them to either do something to make us want to pull that trust back. Now, in business, what does that look like? In business, that's like, okay, man, let's get this project off the ground. Let's get in there. You know, how much do we need? 500 grand. Okay, whatever the hell it is. And you really believe that everybody has the, the same intention that you do, the same values that you do, the same mindset that you do, the same work ethic that you do. And sadly, it ain't the fucking case, man. It really ain't the case. So there's a lot of projects that I've, I've, I've pushed cash to with the best intentions across everybody that was involved and they fucking went to shit man. they went to shit because of people. So in business in general, if you want to invest and you want to uh, diversify and do all these things, you really got to be a, a, a good read of, of, of people, you know, and sometimes you, you, you're not even going to, you can be a good read. You can be a good read and you still get it wrong. You know, people will surprise the fuck out of you, man. And that's kind of where I made some mistakes in business, I think. And as traders, we're kind of most most traders are loners anyway. And, you know, as they sort of make money, you know, they stay trading here and they don't necessarily do anything with their money. You know, so I'm not going to sit here and say that that's a bad idea as well. You could just do absolutely nothing. You know, there's a couple of traders that I know that just want to trade. They don't get they don't want to put themselves in at, at risk in other businesses. They don't want to do any of that stuff, you know. So I would say the safest bet, again, real estate, also great upside there as well. Um, and then if you want to do business and if you want to take that risk, you know, you have to you have to be a good supervisor. You got to be a good manager. You got to be a good, re, you know, a, a good read on, on you have to have a good read on people. If you can't do those things, you know, you're going to end up relying too much on your team because you're the you know, you're just the money guy. And the money guy is the first person to get screwed, man. The money guy is the first person to get screwed. So. You know, all these other people, yeah, sure, they might have sweat equity, but you just lost, you know, a million bucks because you guys had a great idea and everything. And somebody couldn't execute or somebody decided, hey, fuck it, you know, I'm done. You know, I don't want to put that work in and all that kind of stuff. So I've had I've had some good luck with people, but I've had more bad luck, I would say, with people. Generally speaking, like I'm a trusting person. If somebody tells me like, yo, this this, you know, this is this is what I'm going to do every single day. I believe them, man. And. They ain't like us, bro. They're not like us, man. They're not like us. So watch your ass, man. Watch your ass out there. Anybody who anybody who's listening, if you guys are traders, you guys are coming into money, you know, be careful. I also got a nonprofit. The nonprofit is where I love it. I love the nonprofit. So what we do here in uh, at the office, it's also a part of TradeSpace. Uh, basically, we just teach, uh, we just give free entrepreneurship classes, small business management, things like that, and. Um, you know the money that we raise here, we kind of give it as uh, we we give it as fundraising for the for the actual company. So we'll get tons of startups on the island, and they'll come to us for business advice and things like that. We'll do consulting. You know, we'll give them the legal uh, side of things. We'll liaison with accountants and legal so that we you know they can take care of that stuff for free. Um, so that's you know those projects really make me happy there too. Um, you know, but I would, if you if you guys are trying to diversify and 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 put your hands in a lot of different places, just like trading, if you if you're trying to run four strategies at the same fucking time, yo, know, for most people, they can, you don't have the bandwidth for that. You don't have the bandwidth for that. So be careful, man. When you come into some, when you come into that cash, the most important thing is protecting it. Obviously, making sure it 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 grows as well. And you're a trader, so if you're a trader, you already have the mindset for it. You know, so. Be careful. Be careful. Where where you're where it's all gonna screw up is always people. It's always people and their yeah. emotions and their bullshit. Because that's you, what that's who we are. Do you push your daughter towards the risk life? Yo, she she is bougie, man. She's a little bougie, man. She's a little bougie because she, you know, she you know, obviously she hang out she hung out with her father enough times. And we're, you know, we're doing yeah. you know, and my circle and my circle of friends, of course, you know. There's a 
you talk about it as much as you want to. There's classes all over the world, right? There's levels to this yeah. game and shit, right? So, you know, when she comes out and hangs out with Pops, of course, she she decides that she she wants that kind of she wants that kind of stuff. So what do you know? You know, so obviously she already has it. That's why as a parent, like the best thing that you could do is just fucking be better, be a better human being. And the shit just glides right over to them. man. you don't have to, you know, you don't have to make it a freaking overthinking thing. Like you have a child, you just gotta be, you, you know, just be a good man. And the kid's going to be fucking great, man. So yeah. the kid's already, she's an artist. She's a musician. She plays the guitar. She plays the cello and she plays the piano. So she'll, wow. she'll draw and then she'll compose her own piece and then put it on put it on the art that she's selling and everything like that. So wow. do you think you that's know, genetic? That's, I mean, I don't think it's a genetic thing. I think it's something that you see. It could be genetics. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about the, the, the biology stuff, what gets passed down and what doesn't. But you know, <laughs> she's seen me she's seen me hustle since day one, man. I've had her helping me with my hustle since day one. We were flipping, you know, I was flipping tickets. She was doing my spreadsheets since she was, you know, ten wow. years old and eleven years old. You know what I mean? So she reads tape now too. She'll walk into a coffee shop and be like, yo. This, you know, this uh, this is this is not right over here. There's an opportunity over here. So she already has she al she already has that eye because she's she's seen it. She's seen it. She's seen the numbers. She's ran the numbers. Yeah. So you know, it's a it's a really dope thing to watch her kind of come into you know herself and what she wants to do and everything like that. And and bro, if I get to just see and watch that for the next twenty years, I'm happy, man. I'm happy. That's awesome, man. So I asked you about. Your insurance policy, yeah. But what's some of the stupidest shit you spend money on, bro? Because oh, I know for oh. damn sure, bro, I spent money on the stupidest, oh. this, this stupid fucking Avengers glove, bro. I paid like ten thousand dollars for it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Women, like, women is way up there on my list. Women, <laughs> women is way up there on my list, man. It is up <laughs> there. I would, and I, and again, I would, I would call, and I'm saying that to stupid. There's many situations where it's been very stupid on my part. Um, you know, to just kind of throw all this money here on, you know, a trip or this or that or whatever to get a girl's attention and all that kind of stuff. These are the dumb things men do with money um, just because they can. And then finally you realize like, all right, don't be an asshole here. Who gives a shit? You know, it's not that big of a deal kind of thing. So the dumbest thing besides <laughs> besides women that I have spent my money on um, – you know what, man? I'm not like that, bro. I'm never I've never been like that, man. I really have never been like that. So I've never bought like some crazy material ass thing, a car or this or that or whatever. Like I've never been that guy. I mean, I spent I spent like maybe 30 grand to customize my Jeep. I don't know if that's considered dumb. Per nah, that's se. nothing, bro. That's, that's nothing. You probably spent more of that on a girl in one day. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> My biggest, stupidest, you know, waste of money or whatever has always been women, man. It's always been women. So that's my answer, man. That's going to be my answer. Cool. Talk to me about trade space, man. How'd you get started with that? And what's, what's, what's that like for people that man, don't know? Man, you know, imagine us being right next to each other every day. Yeah. Having this conversation right here every day. At lunch, dinner, morning, every day, at the kitchen counter, every single day, and some kind of derivation of this conversation every day, all the time. Imagine that. That's what the value is to this place. People don't get it, right? People will be like, yo, you know, let me buy your course. I'll be like, dude, just buy a desk, just get a desk here and sit next to me for a month. Just shut up and listen. And you'll you'll have more you'll have you'll have nine freaking classes that you could have paid for, you know, just by sitting in this freaking office and just by listening. Like I want, I think traders are uniquely, we're uniquely us, and nobody has a clue how we how we think, right? And we need a space to kind of be around each other. And I hate, I always hated the fact that. I would roll around to these places and the world is the world trades, man. The world trades now, right? If you look all over the world, everybody has a freaking Robin Hood account. Everybody's got a freaking binary options account. Everybody's got a Forex account. Everybody's got something, you know, but nobody talks to each other. Not a single person decides yeah. to talk to each other about anything. So for me, that was the core concept. So I didn't know anybody would come. I just, I just put 300 K into this, into this office and everybody showed up. And so now I'm like, awesome. all right, let me put it around the world 
and now let's do a membership, right? So Alex, Alex pays for the, let's say the gold membership, right? So he can go anywhere across the world. Let's say there's one in Singapore, Dubai, uh, Argentina, you know, Colombia, wherever, right? And immediately, as soon as he lands, he's got a whole crew that already understands how he thinks. All he needs to do is pick up a little language and he's already got all the spots, all the restaurants, all the bars, all the clubs, everything, everything. It's already, it's already there. You know, imagine, imagine that. That's the world that I want to live in. So, this is the start of it. You know, life by design. This awesome. is the this is the start of it. I want to be able to pick up in any moment, go to Singapore. Maybe there's some opportunity that we don't freaking know about. You know, sure. in Dubai or some product that we don't know about. And that's what trade. You know, to me, that's what a trader is. That's who we are, man. We 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 roll around looking for how to buy one, sell for two. This is what we do, man. So if I can do that all over the world, and that that allows me also to get the culture, to get the language, you know, to see the world and all that in a way that immediately I'm plugged in as soon as I fucking land, man, bro. That's what I want. That's what I want, and that's what I want for everybody who who decides to to make it their thing too. You know, that's what I want. Bro, you're a beast, man. I got it's just it's just really awesome. I can't believe it took us this long to kind of just get linked up like this because bro, the shit that you're saying, I just I just feel it, bro. Like I feel like exactly what you're saying. And that's to find someone that you could relate with that under that really gets it is really tough, man. So I just really appreciate that. But before we wrap up, do you have any questions for us? Like, is there anything that we could kind of go over? Like, is there anything that's like kind of in your head that you want to talk about? Is this your whole team right here, man? So, so how's it work over there in your crew, Alex? So, so what? Yeah, are, what... Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, Harry, who's long bias. James uh -huh. is more. Uh, right now, he's doing long swings. Okay. Uh, and in terms of the team, we probably have about fifteen moderators. Yeah. Um, we have a couple thousand members. Um, and what we focus on, man, is just honestly, everyone has a role, right? Everyone has a role. What I learned that to kind of grow MIC is I can't be there 24 yep. seven. I can't be there to uh, facilitate everything because my job as a leader is I want to be able to trade in the morning. So for me, I execute between like 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I trade. And then based on my stats, I found out that after 1030 a.m. I lose money. So rather than continuing to trade after 1030, I cut off my trading and my P&L like dramatically increased. So between 11 a.m. to like 6 p.m., my role is to kind of grow the MIC business, whether that be marketing, whether that be accounting, whether that be legally, whether that be in terms of uh, advertisements, content, this, that. But pretty much uh, because we have traders and members from all around the world, 24-7, there's something happening. There's something yeah. happening in our community. There's something happening at all times. We're also throwing an event in August in Orlando. If you want to come, it's our Dude, super event. dope, man. Super dope. I'm in Orlando all the time, man. Yo, every time I roll through there, man, somebody recognizes me, man. And they're, yeah. just, they're just like, they're, yo, there's a big trading community in, in Orlando, man, for real. Exactly. So we're celebrating our five-year anniversary. So you're more than welcome to come. More than welcome Would to love that. Out. Would love yeah. that, man. My daughter lives in Orlando, too. So it's perfect, man. Hell yeah. So that's, that's the, pretty much it. On my day, pretty much after the market open is spent on trying to grow MIC. As you know, the you know the trading industry has kind of contracted within the last two years, so it's been a lot tougher to grow the business aspect of it. Hundred percent. But 100%. aside from that, my my thought process is just like anything else: is if you build it, they will come. So yeah. just like you are trying to build a great community at Trade Space all around the world, we're trying to build a great trading community, and it's only yeah. a matter of time until it really starts to spiral and domino because at the end of the day traders that want to learn about trading usually have another side hustle they may be a doctor they may be a lawyer they may be an accountant they may be a graphic designer they may be a only fans you don't know what they're doing so but that's why i love us man i love yeah. us so much man we're all we're all so alike but none of us talk to each other yeah. if we yeah. sat there and we actually did we'd be like holy shit this is my this is a this is a brother from another mother right here. I can learn so much from this guy. And it doesn't matter what level they're at. They could just be starting out or they could be freaking worth a hundred million. The the value is there, man, in connecting. And so I love it, man. Yeah. I get some of your guys down here too, man. So some of yeah. your guys come yeah. down here. Yeah, some of your guys come down here yeah. and they're like, yo, we're we're an MIC guy or whatever. So yeah. You know, I gotta come visit you, bro. I gotta come visit you. I gotta make yeah, that man. trip. I gotta come for maybe like a two, three weeks. I gotta come set up a desk there, trade a no little doubt. bit. We I gotta go a little bit. 
we got you covered. Yards. We got you covered, man. Again, San Juan is a beautiful place, man. It is a beautiful place. It's small, and literally everything is right next to each other. So we got the beach two minutes down the block. Everybody is there. The showers are here, too. So everybody just kind of comes, you know, they, they hop off the beach. They come here, take a shower, trade a little bit. Living room is here. Kitchen is here, you know, so... If it's home. It, bro. it will come. It's you fucking it, home, it bro. It literally is home, bro. It's home for traders. That's what it is, man. I'm scared so, I'll never leave if I went yeah, down man. to see it. Dude. <laughs> 100%, bro. 100%. Man, this is awesome, bro. Like, I really appreciate your time, man. I know you're a busy guy. I really appreciate how deep you get into this. And for those people that are watching, just understand that, you know, we're all just normal dudes at the end of the day, man, that just have a real big passion for not only making money, but doing, living this crazy, world that we live in where tesla's up fucking 20 points fedex is up this is up that's up AI, this, that it's it's a crazy always world. something going on man always. Never end, bro. i have my my friends always ask me like oh like how's how's trading been and i've been like i tell them the truth i'm like bro i don't know if i'm gonna wake up to the best day of my life the worst day of my life i have no idea what i'm gonna wake up to at any yep. point at any day it's yep. never super it, it's never super consistent in the sense that the market's gonna do the same thing Yep. It's just always a different fucking ball game. And just when you think you've seen it all, you yep. get something like CXAI gapping up in the after hours to $70. Uh -huh. You get something like Tesla or Meta crashing to like $80, $90, and then tripling off the lows. Like yep. you, you can't make this shit up, bro. You really can't make this shit up. And yep. the market is almost the best. Um, it's like almost the best reality TV show because – Bro, I don't know, bro. I don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow, Elon's going to get shot, and Tesla's going to be down 50%. You don't know. <laughs> That's why I like the live, man. That's why I like the live. The live helps me kind of express all that – craziness and all that emotion with stuff that's happening man because it's insane every single day and so it's crazy, just bro. but it's just hilarious there's so much comedy in it all at all times man so i enjoy i enjoy laughing about they it just all. the way they fuck with people bro is so impressive it's uh -huh. just so impressive like the way you say it is when there's no bid and everyone's screaming for a bid that's your biggest opportunity like they fuck with people to such a point where they're like this thing is going to zero like, I remember, bro, last year, Meta was a zero. Everyone was yeah. like, this should go to fucking zero. Yep. And all of a sudden, it triples. Yep. It, it triples. triples. It triples. And everybody's like, why the <laughs> fuck didn't I buy that what shit? What the fuck it's happened, bad. bro? What yep. the fuck happened? So, like, yep. I don't know, bro. This, And I think the longer that you're in the game, the more you understand that the craziest shit could happen. Yep. Like, I started trading in 2014. So, I didn't see 2008. But in 2008, I'm sure there was no bid anywhere. So now that I've lived through the 2022, I know that when that cycle comes, that there's yep. no bid anywhere, yep. that you could just hit the short button on anything and it's going to work. Even it will make, scared. I'll make millions, I'll make millions of dollars. So all this, and then to go, to tie it back up here before we, before we end, right? Yeah. We were talking about desires and we were talking about wants and, you know, how oftentimes they control us, right? So, you know, let's say you got a kid, you got a guy that wants to make a million bucks or two million bucks, but he wants it so fucking bad. It, it, it expresses itself in, in his emotions, how he thinks of himself if he has a bad day, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. If you're able to look, I'm able to look at myself and be like, all right, I have the skills to get there. I have the confidence. Do I have the market? Do I have the right market for it? Is you know, is has that market been bestowed upon me yet, or is it time yet? Oftentimes, it just ain't time yet. It's not time yet, and you trying to force it, you trying to force it in a world that's just not, it's just not there for you. It doesn't mean that you can't make the million dollars. It doesn't mean that you can't hit the two million. It just means you got to chill out. You got to chill out about it. You know, you got to realize like it's already there for you. You just have to, you get you just have to be patient, bro. That you know? is the most. That's a most truest thing I've ever heard. You, is get, you just got to be patient about it. Right? My market will come, and when it does, you already know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. It's and you better happened. make damn sure that before it comes that you do not exhaust yourself. Yeah, 100%. You fucking imagine, bro. Can you imagine that you were the guy that was buying the dip on Meta at yep. 150, selling at 140, 130, selling at 120, 100, selling at 90, and then you're like, you know what? I'm going to try it again at a hundo. I'm going to sell it at 110. Finally, I got it. And then motherfucker goes up another $200 a share. So <laughs> you got to make sure that you don't exhaust yourself mentally yep. during the improper cycle because you may be right. 
Meta yeah. was a dip buy, right? In hindsight, it was a dip buy. But if you timed it wrong, if the cycle wasn't correct, if you didn't yep. wait for that catalyst of them yep. laying off people that changed the tape, you got too exhausted. Cool. Yep, yep. Yeah. And again, it, 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 you know, we we blow up accounts on overtrading and mental exhaustion, man, because we just can't. You can't feel the shit coming. You can't feel the con. You lose your confidence and all that kind of stuff. And boom, you start blowing out accounts. It, you know, it's not necessary. Just sit there, be patient, man. When that shit comes and that train comes, and you're there mentally, man. Forget about it. The money's there. You already know it, man. So. Yeah, that's, my dumbass, bro. My, I've had so many scenarios where my dumbass, like I use all the buying power I have. Of course, now you ain't got none left. <laughs> thousands of shares, and my fucking crazy, stupid ass is like, how do I get more buying power? Yes, sir. Perfect. Yes, sir. Cool, man. Well, appreciate dude. you coming Thank on. Thank you man. so much, bro. This was awesome, like course. freaking church for me, dude. I just, this was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, have you yeah, back man. on anytime, and then you guys are all welcome. You guys are all welcome to come to PR, man. Just let me know, and and we'll have yeah. a desk for you guys. For real, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Thank you again, brother. Thank you Appreciate so much, it. Bro. All right, peace out, guys. All right, see ya. See you guys.